Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. Cheers. A nice cup of Duchess Grey tea. Hard to beat. Now, it's that time of year when people are thinking of presents. So I thought it might be a good idea to have a roundup of the five top things I've found this year. But first, I'd like to say thanks to everybody who's given me wonderful messages after the death of my brother Alan. He was a lovely bloke. We had his funeral ceremony, unfortunately, between one and three this morning because it was in New Zealand. He had a very sudden illness and died within a month. It's very hard. I'm going to write more about it in writerlywitterings.com, which is my blog post. So if you're interested to know more about him, you can find out there. For now, I'm going to get on with the five best things of the year. What do I think are the five best discoveries I've made this year? Well, first of all, there is this. It's a filing system. That's one example. Here is another example. This is relevant. You can see the difference in size. However, they are the same filing systems. So let's have a look at them now. Here we go. Two files, one with two books in it, one with one book. As you can see, significantly different thicknesses. But, actually, the files are the same thing. So let's just have a look at it. The way they work is they have this nice simple locking mechanism. You have your bits of paper with standard hole punches and put them in. But if you have lots of paper, the file opens all the way up to accommodate them. So you can go from very, very thin records, such as these notes, and you just push down the locking lever and that grips everything in place. So it goes from very, very thin, as I say, to exceptionally thick. And it works enormously well. I love these files. I've now bought, I think, 30 of them for different projects and things I'm working on. What's the second thing I really have enjoyed this year? Well, it's this. Those of you who know me know I really, really like Ackerman inks, especially the Israel Zeblau. This is the Delftsblau, which is a very light, really, I think, gorgeous coloured ink. The only trouble is it's really next to impossible to get hold of because they've stopped making it because of Covid. And look here. As an alternative, I've been using Diamine's China Blue, but you can see, I hope, that it is quite a lot darker. This is the Delftsblau, which is more pastel and just, I find, delightful on the page. Gives superb shading. Um, seems to be a bit of a dry ink, if you know what I mean. Some inks seem to flow enormously well and very easily. Some inks seem to be a little bit drier in the way they work. This is one of the drier types. However, on good paper, it works unfailingly. I have to say thanks very much to Richard Barnes, who sent me this little sample. And as you can see, I've used it all up. So I'm waiting now for an email from Ackerman to say that it's possible for me to get hold of some more. Which brings me on to number three. Because if you're going to be using ink, you obviously need a lovely pen to use it in. This is the Conway Stewart Indiana Jones, which is, I find, just perfect for everyday use. 
This is in my shirt pocket all day, every day. I like the fact that it's a quick opening pen. I absolutely love the lever filling action because it is quick and easy to fill. It's a bit of a bugger to rinse it through. You've got to operate the lever many times, but if you're using the same ink regularly, it doesn't matter. But this, I find, is the ideal everyday carry pen for my shirt pocket because it's light. It fits in my shirt pocket without any difficulty whatsoever. And it has now travelled with me all the way to New Zealand and back to see Alan for his last few days. It didn't burp on the plane. It did nothing at all. Now, obviously, this is one of those things that fountain pens are slightly problematic with. They can burp. If you fill up a fountain pen, put it on a plane, and the changing cabin pressure, if there's any oxygen or air above the ink, that will expand with the changing cabin pressure, and it will burp ink out. My brother laughed at me when he saw me with this, because he had a good ballpoint pen, which, as he said, basically was a lot safer. When we got out of the plane after 12 hours sitting on it at Dubai, my brother had ink all over his fingers because the ballpoint had burped. This did not. So as far as I'm concerned, that shows fountain pens are still superior in so many ways. But of course, when I went to New Zealand, I needed to take lots of ink and pens because I knew I was going to be going straight into quarantine in New Zealand, 14 days, stuck in a hotel room with nothing much to do apart from bits of work. So the other thing that came this year that really I wouldn't be without is this, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Crystal Dream. Like all of these other items, there's a full review elsewhere on YouTube. I put them all up and I'll have links at the bottom of this so you can find them. But this is, to my mind, one of the most beautiful of the Homo Sapiens pens because it is just a stunning piece of design. I love being able to see the, water, the ink sloshing around there. I like the fact it's got the second reservoir, which you can lock off, so that, again, this pen physically will not burp on an aeroplane, because you can empty the top reservoir by just unscrewing that, and it's going back up, and then there's no ink in the top here, as you can see. And then when you want to use it, you just unscrew that, screw it back down, and now you can see there's ink in there. I'll get rid of that quickly because I don't really want it in there right this minute. But this pen is a superb writer. I'll apologise now. That was the spin dryer in the room next door suddenly trying to break through the wall. But this is a beautiful pen to use. Wonderful in the hand, really good length and size and weight. It's mildly hygroscopic, so there's no way that you'll ever feel as though your fingers are too sweaty and the pen's getting slippery. This lovely lava soaks up any moisture from your fingers, so you can use it in the hot or in the cold, doesn't matter. It's got that wonderful quick lock, bayonet lock, so that you've got a really strong positive hold there for the cap. Basically, it's beautiful, it's extraordinarily functional, carries a massive amount of ink, and has one of the best nibs on the market. What is not to like? And then the last thing I have to mention, if you've got pens, you obviously need to use them on paper. This year, I've discovered William Hanna. I tested some of their paper last year. This year, I've basically gone whole hog and here we are with two William Hanna notebooks, an A5 and an A6, and they are just frankly superb. The quality of the workmanship is delightful. A gorgeous paper to write on because this paper is, I think, 125 GSM. It is really significant paper. And it's not cheap, but it's, I think, excellent value. 
costs a bit more than a standard notepad, but it feels like it's a lot more than a standard notepad. Really does feel just divine. And for writing on, it cannot be beaten. Now there are reviews elsewhere. Don't know how that got in there, never mind. If you want to find out more about William Hanna, the link will be at the bottom. But all I'll say for now is, I can't imagine two better notepads. And as you can see, they are getting slightly marked and scuffed. That's because they're being used, because I use them every day. I just adore these things. So there you have it. Two pens, both of them fabulous. This one has a certain amount of, I don't know how to describe it really. I just find it extraordinarily useful, so quick and easy to refill, a delight to use, even though it's very light. But the fact it is so light means it sits in my shirt pocket all day, every day. It even comes with me to New Zealand, and you can't say much fairer than that, can you? Brilliant pens, brilliant writing pads, and some gorgeous ink, which I'm looking forward to getting hold of. The Deltzblau comes from Ackermann, and that means it comes in a little bottle with a marble in the top, which, when you tip the bottle upside down, the marble moves, the ink goes into the top, turn it back the other way up, the ink stays in the top. You unscrew the cap, put your pen in, you can fill it, put the cap back down, it's beautiful. I love it. As a mechanism, as a system, they're just fabulous. Thanks very much for watching. If you feel the urge, please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, all those good things. And again, thanks very much to all of you who sent condolences for, on the death of my brother. It's deeply appreciated. I am very grateful. And apart from that, I'm going to leave you in peace now. I've got some other things to do in the next couple of weeks. One is to review a small pen. I'm hopefully going to be getting a new Freewrite Traveller shortly to review. And I'm also getting a new and I think rather interesting looking planning system, which is specifically designed for people who do blogs, vlogs and all that sort of rubbish. Oh yeah, people like me, that's right. <laughs> Never mind. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.